climbing ends up being a massive part of their life. But so does rolling around, and there oh might be a God. reason for that too. Oh my First of all, panda bones are weirdly thick and heavy for their size, so the falls and tumbles they take don't hurt them nearly <laughs> as much as you'd expect them to. Also, pandas yeah. are near... Today we got how do animals have fun warning wholesome you know what I'm saying shout out the boy uh casual geographic you feel me I got skull tapies here with me and we first to get to reacting captain hi good morning oh my yeah. goodness did you know otters can be pets really there are and I think uh, uh, there's this one channel I watch it's like it's like Kotaro and Hana. They literally are pet otters in Japan. They they are fucking adorable. They're like little sea dogs. They are. It, it's so cute. Everybody has a different playing style. <laughs> Fun. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere at any time at all. And I appreciate how that song spells out fi and not fun. And we all just collectively accepted that. But fun is... Wait. Stuff together. Together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere, anytime at all. Wait, what? What? For friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere at any time at all. And I appreciate how that song spells out fire, not fun. And we all just. What? Oh, that's oh. what he means. I'm like, yo, there's no way he botched that <laughs> shit that bad, bro. I'm like, huh? I was so confused. I'm like, is he adding other synonyms because of what? I was, I was so confused. Collectively accepted that. But fun isn't just a human construct that man or a talking sponge invented. Damn. Now, plenty of animals have ways of having a good time. Take wolves, for example. Wolves are social animals, so it makes sense that they'd use play to strengthen bonds in a pack. Wolves in the wild will do things like play tug of war or try to get others to chase them. And it's not just the pubs doing it, the adults get in on it too. They even have a specific way of inviting others to play. A play bow is like the wolf version of a friend request, and it's a signal that they want others to get in on the games. And if you don't believe me, play bow in front of your dog and watch how fast you get his undivided attention. Because dogs are all about play. It's why stronger dogs will actively hold back and restrain themselves just to keep their playmate engaged in the games going. It's called self-handicapping, and you'll often see it with male puppies letting physically weaker female puppies win. They know what they're doing. They know, and if you've ever had a girlfriend, you do too. I'll tell you what, coyotes sure do. But adult wolves rarely self-handicap because they rarely nerf themselves on purpose. But I'll tell you one thing dogs did get from wolves. Fetch. That's right, we didn't come up with that. In an experiment in Stockholm University in Sweden, researchers hand-raised a litter of puppies, making sure to get them comfortable with their presence, but not playing with them. And at eight weeks old, they brought in a person the wolf pups had never seen before to administer a series of tests. One of those tests involved tossing a tennis ball, and to the shock of the scientists, some of the wolf pups actually retrieved the ball and returned it to Aww, them. Remember, we're talking about cute. wolves here. Wolves that hadn't been trained or motivated to do that, they basically just freestyled the game of fetch. Not all the wolf pups did this, but understanding human cues was thought to be a domestic dog thing, so realistically none of them should have. We didn't teach dogs fetch, it was already programmed into their software. But if we didn't teach them, who did? Well. Maybe ravens, because we've already talked about the wolf-raven relationship arc. Right. But ravens have been seen seemingly playing with specific puppies in the pack. They'll play tug-of-war with sticks. The ravens will do things like tease them to get the wolf pups to chase after them. And sometimes the ravens will even fly over them with sticks to get them to jump. These childhood games are probably how ravens and wolves can form legitimate emotional bonds. And it actually makes a lot of sense that this kind of thing would happen, since wolves are social pack animals and ravens are one of the most playful things with wings while also having the intelligence of a small child. Because you're gonna see, the smarter an animal is, the more playful they usually are. And that's because play typically comes down to two things, manipulating the objects around you and interacting with others. Two things that do require intelligence. Like take bees, probably the most intelligent new social insect out there. Well, in an experiment in the Queen Mary University in London, scientists built a setup where bees had a choice. Take a path leading directly to food, or explore a path with an obstacle course of tiny wooden balls. And to add to that, one side had wooden balls that were fixed in place, while the others were loose and could be rolled around. Not only did every bee choose the ball path, <laughs> every so single one tried rolling a ball at least once. Some of the bees even went right back after eventually stopping for food. And to make it even more interesting, it was actually the juvenile bees that spent the most time ball rolling. So yeah, that's actually how we found out bees can play. 
But the question is, what other insects can? Well, we can probably rule out oh. ants, and here's why. It's not because they're not smart enough to goof off and play games. It's because they probably get murked by the queen before they have enough time to figure it out. Because an ant colony runs like an efficient engine, what and any the? part not doing their oh, part gets turned into past tense. No. And they, like, hold themselves together so they don't fucking drown. And it's like, they're so pack-oriented, it's crazy. Queen ants are crazy cutthroat, like to the point where they'll actively sabotage their own colony just to keep themselves higher in power. The trade-off is, the ant colony is a militia that's capable of cutting down animals hundreds of times their size. And in a game like the Ants Underground Kingdom, you get to personally watch- That's a good ass. That's a crazy ad, you know what I'm saying? W fucking game. And in the Ants Underground Ants with special- That's crazy. Colony to live in. Also, the Ants Underground Kingdom will be- This is crazy. I don't even this code the ants- crazy. Play the world's first- Great fucking game. Just because you can play one game- Great ad, though. It goes way beyond weaponizing wolves. Because as cute as this may be, and it really is, you could argue that keeping wolves close is in their best interest. But then there's this. A raven using a plastic lid as a sled to slide oh down snowy God. hills. And then you have this raven sliding down the roof of a public library. Or at least trying to. And they have nothing to gain from doing this. This is unrewarded play, and basically it means, yeah, they're not doing it for survival or anything. Nah, they're just doing it to have a good time. Yeah, I wasn't kidding. For a bird whose group name is an unkindness, ravens and really corvids in general are probably the most playful birds on the planet. Oh it's why you'll see them actively mess with other animals just for the memes. Even if it means instigating a literal catfight for their That's own entertainment. Crazy. So next time you're- Beat him up. Look how he's Beat just him. watching like, yeah. Fight Beat to the ass. death. <laughs> Right to the just for the memes, even if it means instigating a literal catfight for their own entertainment. Oh, so next time you're wondering how animals have fun, I want you to remember this snowboarding crow. Or you can think of this self-tobogganing otter. River otters in Yellowstone have been seen getting a running start and snow surfing down icy slopes. Now, at first, scientists just figured it was their way of getting around. That theory fell apart when they oh watched the river otters run back up adorable. the slope like kids at a water park only to slide back down. <laughs> and that goes back to unrewarded play because the otters don't gain anything but a good time. And FOMO for otters is a real thing because you're more likely to see them sliding as a group than just solo. And like ravens, you can like almost see how intelligence and playfulness right. almost goes hand in hand. Especially since otters are considered to be the most intelligent of all mustelids, being part of the special class of animals that are able to use tools. To the point where river otters will seem to juggle rocks when they get excited. No, like, seriously, we, we had no idea why they were doing this until researchers at a zoo noticed they started juggling rocks more when it got closer to their feeding time. We still don't know exactly what it is about food that makes otters start juggling rocks, but sometimes you need to just take a moment to stop asking why <laughs> I'm not one to uh gossip, but I heard you wasn't following me on Twitter and Instagram. And you wasn't updated when I wasn't able to post on YouTube and you thought I was gone. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's that simple. Enjoy the rest of the vid. Crocodiles like the color pink. Because what? according to anecdotal observations, <laughs> crocodilians seem to have a pink preference. Favoring tossing around small <laughs> objects that look like the result of a red-white affair. It's why the prehistoric predator that's been terrorizing the planet for hundreds of millions of years can be seen picking pink flowers with its jaws. Crocs apparently have other ways of having fun. They'll take turns going down natural water slides oh and swim God. right back up and do it again. They'll give each other piggyback rides, just cuz. And there's even a story where animal behavior expert Vladimir Diné claimed to witness an alligator seemingly play with a group of river otters in Big Cypress in Florida because Florida. You know, I'm not even kidding. He has a whole paper on play behavior in crocodilians, and he talks about watching river otters regularly visit one specific gator and mess with him by getting close to him, nipping at his tail, and even splashing water on his head. Most gators would respond to this by just submerging, but this one gator played along by lunging at the otters. I know what you're probably thinking, and to that, I give you this. At one point, one of the otters slipped down the bank and was immediately grabbed by the gator. But instead of making an example out of it, the prehistoric merc machine just released it perfectly unharmed. It was like a wow. game that both of them were in on. That's and unlike wolves funny. and ravens, gators and otters have legitimate beef in some parts. <laughs> but like I said, sometimes you need to forget. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Look, he got so much force in this. But look at him. He's like, motherfucker. You motherfucker. Unlike wolves and ravens, gators and otters have legitimate beef in some parts. But like I said, sometimes you need to forget about the why and just enjoy the what. And what happened was, these games went on for a couple days until the marsh eventually dried up and the alligators and otters both moved on. That's not the only example of crocodilians at play, that just happens to be the best one I got. Another time was when a gator oh found a football God. in his swamp and instead of easily popping it, it seemed to toy with it by grabbing it with his jaws and tossing it around. 
You know, I could 100% use this to make a Florida Gators joke, but at this point, I think it would be low hanging fruit. But crocodiles Damn. and alligators being playful goes right in line with the intelligence point I made earlier. <laughs> Despite having a brain in the weight class of a walnut, oh crocodilians are much more intelligent than they get credit for. Unlike dolphins, who get all of the credit for it. Now, you probably know dolphins like to have fun. The problem is, most of their pastimes would probably get this video age restricted with the quickness. Like, for example, when two Amazon River dolphins were seen playing with a Benny Anaconda. I put Damn. playing in quotes because both dolphins were visibly aroused, and a snake ended up flatlining, likely to drowning. And, and you know, knowing what I know about dolphins, that's probably what got them excited. Because most dolphin fun comes at someone's expense. I can repeat that same sentence without the fun, and it'd still be accurate. <laughs> I give you crazy. exhibit A. But dolphins can have fun in safer work ways, too. They'll take turns chasing each other in games that can last hours. They'll find random objects to carry around and even play catch with. Oh, and a little fun fact for you. One of a dolphin's favorite things to play with includes sargassum seaweed. Researchers actually watched dolphins in the Bahamas play a kind of keep away game with the seaweed. But the best part was the dolphins were used to being around humans and eventually they invited the researchers to play with them. And no amount of scientific oh integrity God, would stop horrible. any of us from saying no. Right. Dolphins have also been seen surfing the bow waves produced by ships sometimes for miles on end. It's not like they just do it to save energy. A group of spinner dolphins actually memorized the path scientists on a boat would take. So every morning the spinner dolphins would show up and ride the bow wave as the scientists traveled to their site. The dolphins would leave for a bit but then return and do the exact same thing when the scientists started heading back. So yeah, it's really no surprise that the smartest thing in the ocean can be as playful as a child because honestly they're probably as smart as well. So smart that many believe that dolphins will purposely seek out puffer fish just to get them elevated. Apparently the tetrodotoxin that can discharge oh you from the population in minutes oh has something of a narcotic effect in small doses. To the point where people will swear drop. by seeing dolphins take turns passing the puffer until they're all stuck on its product. And if Don't dolphins were humans, they'd definitely be the ones huffing markers in class. It by the way, you uh, really shouldn't do oh that. But God. dolphins are far from the only ones that get elevated and hella faded. It's believed that cats will eat Cat grass bit. and leaves because they contain folic acid which helps move oxygen around the blood. Plus when they throw it up, it helps clean out their system. So it shouldn't be a surprise to see the biggest cat in America chewing on leaves. What's surprising is that it seems to put the jaguar in a trance and even induces kitten-like behavior. Like to the point where people believe that this apex predator will go out of its way to chew on leaves from the Yaji. And in doing so, they book a flight on the same plane as Joe Rogan. Scientists can't say for sure just why jaguars will go to these lengths to get zooted. Many natives will tell you that jaguars do it to buff their perception and senses, which heightens their hunting abilities. We don't know if the plants even affect them like that, but let's be real. We all know that look. That boy is gone. He if your child gone. ever came home looking like this, you'd definitely give them a talking to. So it's in my non-professional opinion that jaguars will purposely get off one when they're not busy hunting for a living. Because when nothing in a jungle can press you, you can afford to. Not the case for pandas though, they gotta take licks <laughs> from everybody. That doesn't stop them from being a walking viral clip every time they're on camera. But there's actually a reason why you can make an entire playlist on pandas being cute. Mother pandas usually only raise one baby at a time. If she pops out twins, then it's all good for Mary Kay, but it might be up for Ashley. For most of a young yeah. panda's life, its only playmate is its mother. So when keepers hand raise baby pandas and the baby pandas imprint on them, this is what happens because this is what they do with their actual mothers. Another thing pandas like to go viral for is their very much one-sided beef with gravity in the form of falling <laughs> out of trees. But like I said, a lot of animals can pack up pandas, especially when they're young, so their only option is to climb, which very much makes trees their safe haven. They climb to avoid predators. They climb to avoid other pandas. They'll even sometimes go through the process of making another panda in the trees. Trees are so important that young pandas instinctively love climbing. So much that many believe that the reason pandas like to hug their caretakers' legs is because they see human legs as trees and honestly can't help themselves. Oh and while this God. might be fun for them, this is actually a form of rewarded play since climbing ends up being a massive part of their life. But so does rolling around and there oh might be a God. reason for that too. Oh my First of all, panda bones are weirdly thick and heavy for their size so the falls and tumbles they take don't hurt them nearly as much as you'd expect them to. Also, pandas are nearsighted, so it's possible they legitimately can't see what's in front of their faces. But many scientists believe pandas just enjoy rolling around, like to the point where mothers will often join their cubs doing it. They're not the only bears that can be playful. Polar bears can actually be just as goofy, it's just that pandas are a lot less likely to john with a human for food. Polar yeah. bears can form friendships where they eat, travel, and play together, and these relationships can last years. Their favorite way to bond is by wrestling, and like with dogs, a stronger polar bear will often self-handicap and let the smaller bear win. And also oh, like with God. dogs, polar bears have their own way of asking for permission to play too. In their case, a polar bear will move its head from side to side to initiate a friendly sparring session. These pair bonds usually last a summer until they eventually go their separate ways for the harsh winter season. But mm -hmm. time and time 
time again, scientists have seen the same polar bear friends reuniting after breeding season and carrying on like nothing ever happened. And honestly, I feel like hilarious. most adult friendships go just like that. Yep. As in, you yep. can go months without speaking or hearing from each other, yep. but you can also link up and go on like they never left. Yeah, but of course, polar right. bears know how to have fun by themselves too. Polar bears have been seen sliding down hills or across ice for hours for no reason other than having fun. So basically, even the biggest land predators on the planet know how to have a good time. But what about the biggest land animal, period? Well, elephant? it turns out, having oh, fun God. is actually an important part of an elephant's life, and males and females are different in how they do it. Young males love rough housing and play fighting, which actually helps prepare them for a future of running fades for female validation. This natural playful aggression is why you'll often see young male calves chasing around other animals. Hold on, wait for it. And there it is. That's what it looks like for a baby elephant to throw a tantrum. Fun for young females usually involves thrashing around vegetation, sticks, bones, and anything else they can wrap their trunks around. But the ultimate sign of elephant fun is something they do called the floppy run. And it's exactly what it sounds that like. When elephants really get excited, they'll shake their heads from side to side, they'll let their trunks hang loose and their ears flap in the wind, and they'll just run. All while trumpeting. It's usually calves and young teenagers that get floppy with it, but sometimes the whole yeah, herd floppy. gets involved. <laughs> but considering half an elephant's time is spent in the water, then it makes sense that half their fun happens in there too. And if you've ever seen elephants playing in the water, it's actually <laughs> wild how much they look like kids in a pool. There's something really satisfying <laughs> about watching a 12,000 pound okay. vibe check splashing around in water like a child. And often they'll spray water at each other or sometimes even other animals just for the sport of it. And in this case, other animals can very much include humans. But all this lighthearted fun might actually be crucial to their survival. You see, some studies say that the most playful elephant calves grow up to be the ones best at coping with environmental stress, which increases their chances of survival. Again, we don't know if this is 100% true, but like I said, sometimes you need to just forget about why and just enjoy watching a baby elephant take a shower. But that's gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank you all so much for the support this year, it really does mean a lot. And best believe, I got a lot more stuff planned for 2023. But for now, happy holidays, stay safe out there, and I'll see you all in the next one. That be fucking video. That be fucking vid, man. You know what I'm saying? Now we've seen some real gruesome shit this year from Casual Geographic, so outlandish. You shit. know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we got the, you know what I'm saying? The wholesome. You know what I'm saying? The wholesome stuff. But uh, W video, man. <laughs>